how does some gurus have powerful presence? Like even this body feels major effects in presence of Sadhguru, Osho, Shalendra. These effects do not occur everywhere, it is certain. The power is not in the guru, the guru person. The power is in the guru field. The person is simply a medium for the guru field. Those who embody the guru field, those who allow it to flow, display more power in their presence. So I have also seen that those who are in the energetic paths, they have the most powerful presence. The presence feels like an attraction and those who are on the path of knowledge, not much. It is not only gurus, you can also cultivate the same thing. It's not difficult. The less ego you have, the more guru field will be manifested. The ego is your boundary, isn't it? And it is very small. So lower your boundary, you will get the same power. This one individual is gone, now the guru can be many. So the guru will display different personalities to different seekers. This will become automatic. It is not that the guru plans this thing. It happens automatically. I have never seen any guru plan something. <laughs> it's very rare. They do the planning but for practical reasons. So the guru has no personality and therefore he can be any personality. Yes, their behavior will become puzzling because our intellect demands consistency of behavior from people. Otherwise it gets confused. Who, who am I talking to? This is the primitive tendency in the ego. So if somebody is seen to change colors like chameleon every day, there is a distrust there. So only those who have lower egos, they can tolerate a person with a lower ego. Otherwise people are either afraid or they, tra and they consider these people as crazy. So only a crazy person can tolerate a guru, nobody else. It is possible to cross some boundaries sometimes. There are some cults, there are some traditions. They don't look like humans also nowadays. Whatever we consider as a human, <laughs> they have crossed those, those boundaries, they are so crazy. So yes, less ego means more colorful personality. It is opposite of what you expected, isn't it? You thought my personality will be gone, I'll become like rock. This is what we call as ignorance. When the person is gone, you become many people, you become many person. You are not limited to this one which was indoctrined in you. It is not you, simply indoctrination. Whatever you thought is you, is a piling up of impressions. That is what you call ego, nothing else there. So when this is thrown away, there is a potential, the canvas is blank, anything can be painted there. And such a person cannot be tolerated by an ego. Today you are this, tomorrow you are that. <laughs> it is impossible for an ordinary indoctrined ego to tolerate something which is so free. That's why nobody likes spiritual people. They are too free. Ego needs a handle. Ego needs a leash on everybody. That is how it survives. Actually we know from where it is coming. I know it. It is coming from the Guru field. How is it so accurate? Because I have stepped aside. This I, the ego has stepped aside. Even the intellect is surrendered to the Guru field. And then it is very easy for this field to do that. They already know everything. There is another explanation of it that those who are asking the question, they already have the answer. It is blocked somehow by the ego, none other than the ego. The ego needs survival. It blocks anything which it thinks is harmful for survival. I heard this, you know, I don't have any evidence for this. There is a lot of evidence for the Guru field explanation, but not this one, that the answer is within. It is blocked by some survival processes. And when the question is asked, the answer comes from the same person, the memory of the same person. And that is why it is so convincing. And the answer feels like, I already knew this. I always had this answer. Where was this? It is so convincing. So there, there, are, there can be explanation from where it is coming. But it is again somehow related to this egolessness, the lowering of the boundaries. You can almost read it from the Akashic records and you can say it. <laughs> it is sometimes like this. 
And yes, the, when the ego comes back after the answer is finished, the ego is puzzled. How could I say this thing? Isn't it? Its illusion is shattered that I am responsible for all the actions. I am doing this. This illusion is totally broken after this. When it happens every day, yes, the ego becomes kind of abnormal. Now it starts saying some things which are totally puzzling for the person himself. That's why I said, you know, some spiritual people have crossed the boundary. They are no longer human. We are defined as humans, not by the body. We know this is the animal body. This is not human body. Even the animals have much better and beautiful bodies than humans. But the human is defined by the ego. <laughs> Biggest possible ego in the universe is human ego. Isn't it? So when that is gone, we say no longer human. Anyhow, those who can only see by their eyes, they see a human figure there. They don't understand what has happened to this human. He is not a human now. There are many steps of progress between animal and uh, what you call as the Dev Yoni. I, I don't know. There is, any, there is nothing in English for that. You can say angelic for form. That's not really true, isn't it? Angels are too big. So we do become something lower than that. And it is a mental process, not physical. The body is going to grave. It is not going to heaven. You are going to heaven. Yeah. You are evolving, not the body. The body is meant to be dropped, not to be taken. Siddhant has a question. You said that you got your, get your questions from Gurufil. Not questions. Yeah, questions also and answers mostly. How did you develop this ability? Thomas Campbell calls this as intuition. Can we develop this? Yes, why can't? On the step number seven, we have made all the arrangements for you. The step number seven says that we'll make attempts to put you in contact with the Guru field. Actually, this is the only program in the universe which is doing this. Otherwise, the Guru keeps the student uh, like one feet away all the time. I mean, I don't know whether there is any truth in that or what. There is always a difference between the Guru and the student in other paths. On the path of knowledge, the student becomes Guru instantly <laughs> as soon as he gets the knowledge. Then what do I say? Don't rely on me. This thing is momentary. You get your own food from your own source. So initially we give you fish, then we give you the net, catch your own. So yes, you can develop this ability and again it is related to the individual. Get rid of the individual first, then do that which is told to you. <laughs> Very simple. <laughs> what is told to you will be totally different from what I tell others. You see, why are these people, all these people, and they are opening their blogs, why are they doing the recordings and all. They never tell you what is happening with them, isn't it? They are changing so fast, they, they, are, they don't recognize themselves in the mirror now. So you ultimately get the same, from, get, get everything from the same place, which is what we are calling as Guru Field. I'm not saying that you will be put into touch with your own source and then I'm in touch with my own source. No, there is only one. You're right. It's only one. So the thing is, I cannot even call it one because it is many. Isn't it? And that's why we call it field. Being many, it is one. Now, it's already beyond intellect. So let it be. I think everybody is now used to this thing where there is no, the intellect cannot reach. You should become used to this state where the intellect has nothing to do. The state, state of acceptance, total surrender. Oh, it is like this. And the key is expressing I am telling Siddhant here that the key is expressing what is learning absorbing. You are, you are not told too much you know, to express. Your expression is mostly questions. So I encourage people to answer sometimes, you know, express, express. And the thing is, uh, you see, they cannot express because uh, the lower layers don't let them express. So you need to do some little bit of purification also 
Otherwise, the lower layers are going to interfere in your communication with the guru field. They will inject their own thing or they will, whatever is received, they will distort it in their own color. So, yes, pure purity <laughs> needed. And that day I was telling you this story. It's not story, this is a kind of general knowledge thing that how does a guru decide who is going to sit on his throne? Like there are some traditions where the seat of the guru is very important. Not everybody. So I don't know where I ask this in Hindi or English satsang, one of the satsangs. How will he decide who is going to be my, what's called, follower, not, not follower, the one who will take charge after me of the ashram. Okay, here, yes, this there's a kind of, Lineage, no? uh, yes, accessor, yes. Next in the lineage. So what decides? He does not appoint the one who knows everything from every scripture. No, not, not at all. He does not appoint the one who is smartest, most managing capabilities, fresh from the MBA school. <laughs> no, <laughs> will never do that. Not the strongest. He always appoints the one who is purest because he knows Everybody is going to misinterpret what he is going to send after he is gone, after he has left the body. The Guru never stops the work. This is the property of the Guru. Otherwise, he is not the Guru if he stops. So, even death cannot stop the Guru's work. And he needs a very clean channel there. <laughs> very selfish people, no Gurus. He needs something who can faithfully transmit. So those who, are, who read, read too much scripture will insert scripture into the transmission. Those who are dominant and have leadership qualities, a lot of ego already, not suitable. So the one who is pure does not think too much. Simple fellow will be given the seat of the Guru. There is something remarkable which will happen to those who are doing the service in step number 7 that as soon as there is a question, you are going to forget everything except the answer. This is a man, this is a woman. No, you won't remember that. He, that day he said something bad to me. No, you won't remember that also. Your first priority will be to give an accurate answer, as accurate as possible. Oh, I love this person, I need to explain more to this person. No, one line, yes, that's what I want to say. This is the amazing thing. When, when it comes from the Guru field, it neutralizes everything else. Nothing is of importance then. Nothing is important. While you are doing a normal conversation, what are you trying to do? You're, either you are trying to impress or you are trying to dominate or whatever typical psychological drama is going on there. Everybody knows this, isn't it? If you want to please the person, yes men, I, I, yes, 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 very good, very good. So, when you are... In, under the guidance of the Guru field. You are very honest, straightforward. Your priority is to tell the truth. Bittersweet, nothing matters. And then you forget. Your worst enemy is standing in front of you who killed your whole family, tortured. And when he asks a question, a spiritual question, you will never say, I am not going to tell you. This is the magic I have seen happen. Now you will clearly understand how Lakshman managed to get teachings from Ravan. How is it even possible? Saw on enemies, isn't it? Even Ram was not so angry as his brother. His brother was, you know, a very angry person. And what happened? Ravan gave him knowledge. Whatever knowledge we don't know, what, does somebody know what did he actually teach him? <laughs> Self-realization or what? No enmity. They were, they were killing each other just minutes before. Now he's taking knowledge. How is it possible, you will say? Actually, that is the only thing that will be possible as soon as you are in surrender to the Guru field. That is why people say you know, the Guru is compassionate, the Guru is kind. No, 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 nothing like this. As soon as a question is posed, the, all the compassion and the kindness comes. Now he cannot advise badly. Even if he wants, even if strongest of the ego is present in the Guru, he will advise you correctly. You call it power, like he said, no? It's power in the Guru. This is not present in ordinary person, you see. You see your enemy and if he says, you know, tell me where I can find water, I am dying. 
and if the water is on the right you will point to the left <laughs> go there you will find a lot of water you want that person to be dead that is uh, natural ego we should not call it bad it's natural but the gu- if the guru is standing there he will bring the water you sit here sit down i'll bring the water people think it is compassion but it is loss of individuality the guru field has knows no individuality actually that's why they can become anything they will serve any anybody who demands knowledge that day i was saying you know i don't pray <laughs> i don't pray i don't fold i i do sometimes you see just to behave nicely to be to be a good boy but usually my prayer is you know please do this i am tired of this fellow now he is not progressing do this something like this i say they have no objection at all they are not demanding that you touch their feet and you know shower them with flowers and only then they will fulfill your wish no you need to just say it and it will happen why no ego in guru field although they can manifest ego when when they want it it is like this so you will see that you know the great pandits when they were challenged how can you say everything is one prove it to me and any anybody will say you know why should i worry about you you are idiot you do you you won't understand anyway what i am saying no they never did this they took pains to explain to that in the debates you will find many scriptures are there full of debate this is the usual method <laughs> is typical in the on the path of knowledge to debate so they take a lot of pains to explain why they are right although they are not obliged to do that they can keep the other their whomever is debating as they can keep them ignorant you deserve to be ignorant i am not going to explain they can say like this but as soon as the challenge is posed it becomes their duty to explain so that is why you see the spirituality is totally opposite of worldliness worldly people cannot do these things i remember some of my teachers you know school teachers it looked like that they hated me completely totally like it was hell but you see whenever i was stuck somewhere in a problem i could not understand something i could see the face of the teacher change completely okay come here i'll see what why you can't understand they took me to the side you know they brought me in the front and tried to explain and i was surprised you know he was trying to beat me that day and today he is helping me you can say this is the soul of the teacher <laughs> cannot help but assist in the progress of the student even if he is totally irritated by the student he is going to help him Ajay is asking, does Guru help in the ways not understood by us, like by strong intention, etc.? Yes, you understand nothing at all. Let me tell you, when you meet a Guru, <laughs> I am telling my case. I understood nothing at all. Actually, my image of the Guru, the image that I, that I had in my mind, was very negative. That these people are abusive. These people want money. These people are commanding. They want us to surrender and so on. So we don't understand. any guru very bitter is they are loving also <laughs> sometimes they are loving but the loving ones will keep loving you they don't give anything they don't give anything more than that because you see truth is bitter the truth cannot be given in a loving manner it has the ignorance has to be beaten out of the seeker a very few gurus like that whip lashes on your mind is not sweet at all so the seeker does not really understand the guru the seeker is attracted to the guru simply because he finds a solution there nowhere else so strong intentions and all yes the guru does everything possible the guru has offered his time his mind his skills even his body to you and you use only fraction of it the, the guru offers you everything what do we want in return you yes, follow the instructions <laughs> you see <laughs> follow the instructions it's just like a guide on the himalayan mountain you see the guide offers his services and he takes the risk of climbing the mountain with you although he has climbed it many times so it's very easy for him he never falls but he catches you whenever you fall 
and he is in that bitter cold extreme situations dangerous places he is guiding you to climb the mountain what is he asking you follow my instructions don't step here step there don't grab this ro- rope grab that rope we'll not camp here we'll camp there and those who don't follow those instructions you know where the land <laughs> those who climb with the guide they reach there the guide has offered his skills his knowledge of the mountain even his body he is risking his body and whatever food he carries he shares with you and so on you see yes it takes money but you know there is no the metaphor breaks here the guru does not even take money so it is just like a guide the offering but uh, no people don't understand these things sometimes you will find the guru is angry at you why is angry at you because you are not you have not done that for which he has offered everything so he senses that probably this person is not ready yet and uh, he becomes busy with others that's all because who will want to waste time on one person when he can provide his service to 100 more in the same time is very selfish by nature also guru is also very selfish the selfishness here is that my services are not being utilized properly when 20 people can benefit i am running after one that is attachment of some kind isn't it so the guru gives up not because he cannot do it because you know better things can be done and when that person is ready the person you know has no way to go comes back to the guru only <laughs> where will you go <laughs> in the whole illusion this dark sea of illusion there is one lighthouse that is your guru where will you go so the guru is already helping in uh, in ways will you will never understand and he is the, he will be there with you for many lifetimes that also you don't remember isn't it your guru is with you guiding you since many lifetime do you remember him what do you remember lela is saying i agree with the putting out strong intentions and writing down those intentions and eventually you will find exactly what you need very good that is a good method to solidify your intentions first thing you do is write it down on paper with your hand or you can type it you know it's one and the same thing but writing is kind of more has a stronger effect and then do all kinds of these rituals you know imaginations and light spheres and all these things so will the guru do that no we don't need that kind of drama i simply say it my method is say it with your mouth that's all is needed if there is even a little bit of power in my words if you have spoken truth even once this words will take effect and that is why in our country the guru agya or the command of the guru is so important because he said it <laughs> if he said it it must be done it is not never said by the person actually it is the guru field that uses this instrument so guru said it now it must be done it can be anything at all you see 